Minister uh, Foley as well. We really appreciate your time. I know it's an extremely uh, hectic time at the moment. Um, Minister, it is uh, shocking, I suppose, what happened with the calculated grades. Um, I appreciate that your team within the Department of Education discovered these errors and really brought it to your attention and that an immediate plan of action was put in place. However, I suppose my question lies with the company that was involved, uh, I suppose Polymetrica, as you'd mentioned previously in your statement last week, um, and that there was an investment of roughly 75,000, if I understand correctly. I suppose my question is in relation to, was enough investment given to the company involved in doing the calculated grading scheme? I know that you're, and I welcome hearing the independent report, it is very much so about lessons learned, but it is, you know, it was such an important, um, it was so important, the Leaving Cert grades, for over 60,000 students. And we now know that, you know, it, that over 424 have been accommodated in higher education, but my query really does lie with, was there sufficient investment, I suppose, at an early stage with, the, with us dealing with an unprecedented event, you know, managing calculated grading system, and then I suppose subsequently that I really look forward to seeing that report and maybe perhaps a timeline for that as well. Um, I really appreciate and acknowledge the work done by the department in such a fast time. I mean, from when you discovered the situation to when you were able to um, analyse the details of who was affected was, was uh, very, very swift. Um, However, yeah, I just think it is, it's shocking, it is shocking that it just occurred. It really is, and I understand that for yourself as well, it was a very difficult time too last week. Um, I suppose the, in relation to the repeat exams, I note that over 2,820 students have opted to sit the Leaving Cert exam. And as you've mentioned, it's a very low percentage, over just 4%, I suppose, that are going forward to sit again. So um, it will allow the students an opportunity for a higher grade. So in other words, that they won't be um, penalised if they achieve, you know, if, they, if their grades are lower than what was given in the calculated grading system. Um, I welcome the work behind the scenes of, between your own department and the department, I suppose, of further and higher education and with all the third level institutes to increase capacity. Um, that again was done in a very swift time frame, only just a week for over 424 students to receive an upgraded offer from the CAO today. And again, I would like to wish all those students well in their voyages of discovery. I'd also like to highlight again the wonderful opportunities through further education um, and apprenticeships. I suppose many students are you know, stepping out and may not have achieved what they would have liked or wished for um, when they first put in their CEO request, but there are so many opportunities now to, to discover and find out about the apprenticeship programme where you can earn and learn at the same time, and also with further education possibilities through um, the Goey Ross Common Education Training Board and through all our ETBs across the country. In terms of reopening schools, um, the, it is great to hear that schools are a low risk factor. Um, that I think is very important. And I had a chance to see the big week in September on RTE last night, and it showed children and families experience of returning to school, including Abbey Community College in Boyle. From the first days of going to school to secondary school principals encouraging teenagers to keep social distancing, we can see the importance of keeping our schools open. And that is a huge, it, it's our number one priority, keeping the schools open through dealing with COVID. Um, however, high classroom numbers um, in primary schools are an issue in primary schools. Um, I know we spoke about this previously, about the um, European average being 20 pupils per class, and in Ireland it's 25, and yet we're aware particularly in regional areas of student numbers been up around the 26, 27 mark. I'd hope and look forward to potentially in the budget uh, next week that there would be um, some focus on um, managing that and helping schools uh, you know, keep that social distancing. It was funny in the programme last night seeing principals running around trying to encourage teenagers to keep the social distancing while they're going through corridors, but we really do need, do need to ensure we can achieve it in classrooms. Um, I suppose just on the, the school transport scheme, I'd just like to welcome the, that you have, that you're looking at it, that you're looking at the capacity measures. Um, and I suppose just in relation to the different levels of COVID and what our society may face in the weeks and months ahead, I suppose just to highlight the, the way that the flu vaccine can be uh, given to children there through the nasal injection, if I understand correctly. But um, also, how are we encouraging in our schools, um, both teachers and children to take up uh, the vaccine measure as much as possible. So what measures have been taken in schools? And then finally, I suppose, just in relation to the wearing of visors, um, we've heard many uh, GPs come out last week about visors and the wearing of visors and how they do not 
uh, are not as effective, I suppose, as masks. Um, and particularly, I suppose, in areas where, you know, if it's a taller person with young children, um, you know, a lot of that is going downward. So I suppose just what opportunities or measures would the Department of Education consider for teachers and uh, I suppose all members working within the schools in primary and secondary. Thank you very much for your time, Minister.